everyone. Uh, this is a day we have been waiting for for a really long time. I would like to introduce you to Father Nathan Bell. We are overjoyed to be able to begin celebrating our ministry together. Father Nathan is very familiar with Southern Maryland and had actually heard of Middleham and St. Peter's Parish before he applied to be our new rector here. The Holy Spirit definitely played a huge part in connecting us. As Father Nathan settles into his new role and we move forward, we will make sure all of you are kept well informed about how and when we will all be able to get to know him and his wife, he, better. So let us rejoice in this beautiful day as we begin our journey in this new chapter at Middleham and St. Peter's Parish. Father Nathan. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's good to be with you. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's not a great way to begin when nobody can hear me. But, uh, uh, I appreciate your patience as I uh, enter into this new uh, space and new phase of my ministry and figuring out new technology. Uh, so it's really a joy of, uh, of mine to be with you, and my wife and I both appreciate your having us here for ministry. Um, so we will begin with our opening hymn. Uh, Let us build a house where love can dwell. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Blessed the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our lesson this morning, Psalm 149. Let us recite it together. Alleluia. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed this is glory for all his faithful people. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Our gospel hymn is in your pamphlets. <laughs> Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory 
according to the Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The psalmist proclaims, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. This is a new day for the church and a new time for our world. And for us as a church, it is time for a new song. And I give thanks for that. Uh, I give thanks for you receiving uh, my wife and I so graciously into your parish, into uh, this community. My first day was on Tuesday, so I've been getting to know a few of you and getting to know the place a little bit. Uh, But I'm familiar with this uh, broader place of Southern Maryland, as uh, Joan mentioned. Um, For those of you who don't know, I'm I'm from St. Mary's County originally. Uh, My parents uh, and I have lived in different parts of Maryland my whole life, Um, and I was most recently um, assistant to the rector at St. Mary's Parish at the southern end of St. Mary's County, and also Episcopal chaplain at St. Mary's College. Um, After that, I spent a year at a Franciscan community in England, which I can tell you more about later if you like, if you're interested in that, Uh, and that's where I met my wife, Fee. We met there. She's from South Korea and we were just married recently, uh, just over a week ago. Um, So thank you for having us among you. Uh, And so there's a lot that is new going on in my life and in our lives together. Uh, I'm sort of on two honeymoons at once, you might say, right? Uh, So I wonder who will get fed up with me first. (laughs) I won't tell you, don't don't ask. Um, But uh, those are all good things, and they're there's much for us to anticipate, much for us to celebrate about our life together, about this new phase in our lives together. And a new day in our lives calls for a new song. It is a celebration of new life, in one sense, uh, which does require letting parts of our old life go. And this is some of what our scriptures today talk about finding new life by letting parts of our old life go. And this is what the church has called repentance. So St. Paul says, besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. St. Paul is also talking to a church who is finding a new day in their lives, talking to a church 
a community of believers early in the history of the church who are finding new life in Christ together. And so he says you have to let go of some of the old parts of your old life in order to find that new life together. And this is what he calls the desires of the flesh. And he goes into these lists of vices, which I won't go into, that are sometimes kind of strange to our ears today. But what he's doing is naming things that keep us back from God and from one another, and those he calls desires of the flesh. Not that all desire is wrong, but that sometimes what we want, what we think we want, or even think we need, keeps us back from God and from other people. So, St. Paul says, if you want to find this new life in Christ, if you want to put on the armor of light, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and find life in him, we have to let go of some things first and look within ourselves in order to find what that is. And so, as you and I enter this new phase in our life together, we could ask, what parts of myself, what parts of my old life, have I let go of in order to find new life? And in a communal sense, uh, Christ himself gives us some practical instructions about this when he talks about settling conflicts in the church. He describes the tremendous power and opportunity of the church when he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What we do here affects the hereafter, he says. Truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Those are powerful words that when, if we agree, if two of us agree about anything when we gather in his name, it will be done for us, he says. But anyone who's worked in the church for any amount of time, longer than a few hours, know how difficult that is. Because as Father John used to tell me, where two or three are gathered in his name, there are four opinions. <laughs> but, Christ tells us, if you begin that life together, if you sort of give it a try, if you come together in my name and agree on anything, it will be done for you. And he gives us practical instructions on how to do this, fortunately. He says, if you have a disagreement, go to that person first, right? Don't go around them or to someone else or to the rector, unless it is the rector, with whom you have a disagreement. And I'm sure that will never happen. <laughs> but go to that person first directly and talk to them. If that doesn't work, then bring in two or three others, and only then bring it to the whole church. Jesus here unites very practical, everyday matters with eternal matters. And that's what Jesus always does. He connects the everyday, the practical, with the eternal and the spiritual. They go together in him because of him. So he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And he shows us how to live this out. So again, when we gather in his name, we find new life among us because he is among us and he is our life. And in order to live that life together with him in our midst, we sometimes have to let go of old parts of our lives that hold us back from finding him in our midst, that hold us back from God and from one another. So we might ask, looking at these scriptures, what in myself can I let go of in order to find new life? We might ask, looking at this gospel passage, what conflicts or old parts of my relationships can I let go of? in order to find better relationships, in order to find new life. This is a day and a season of new life for us as a church, for my family, it is a season of new life. For our community and our world, it is a season of new life. In the state of Maryland, where 
beginning to move into a different phase under the pandemic, right? And we're looking forward, we hope, to a day when this is behind us, right? When we can gather in person again, uh, as we used to, and shake hands and sing and do all those wonderful things. So it is a season of new life in many ways, a new day for our church, for our community, for our world. And so we can be asking what parts of our old lives can we leave behind and be better because of it. We might ask as a church, what ways of thinking can I let go of in order to find new opportunities, new life with Christ together? Now, I want to offer a little bit of a counterpoint to that as we think about how to go forward in all of this. Um, Jesus uh, and St. Paul both talked about new life. Jesus talked about new life in himself, and St. Paul pointed to Jesus to talk about new life in him. Uh, and they talked about uh, much that is new and leaving behind what is old, but they also clung very closely to what was true, what was eternal in their traditions, right? I would call St. Paul and Jesus radicals, uh, a word which comes from the word root, like radish, root, uh, because they stuck to their roots. They challenged much of the conventions of their day. They challenged people in power because they clung to truths that were eternal. They did what Jesus described as bringing forth out of their treasuries what was old and what is new. So as we go forward as a church in a very different time in our world and in a new season of our ministry together, we can ask, what am I being called to pass on? What is eternally true in our church and in our tradition that I am being called to pass on to our children and to our grandchildren? And what am I being called to let go of? What am I being called to let go of from my old life, from our old lives, in order to find new life? We're called to let go of what keeps us back from God and one another and to pass on those truths that bind us to God and to each other. There is not an easy or magic formula for figuring out that question. It requires constant discernment and prayer. But we will be able to answer those questions faithfully if we do uh, what my dad describes as keeping the main thing the main thing. And the main thing for us, for you and I as the church, is Jesus Christ, his cross and resurrection. Uh, coming to you as your rector, I'm not an expert on anything, okay? I hate to tell you that, but I'm not an expert on anything. I'm not a professional administrator. Um, I'm not a professionally trained public speaker, although I've gotten a little instruction in both of those. I'm not an academic, as I've found spending time with academics and professors. I'm not an academic, okay? Um, I've gotten some training in a few things here and there, and I have some letters after my name that I'm told mean something. Um, but what my calling, what my vocation is as a priest, is to keep before you the Lord Jesus Christ and his cross and resurrection, and to remind us that he is why we do anything that we do. And if I'm not doing that, I hope that you will hold me accountable for that. In the same way, what we as the church do uh, is to keep Jesus Christ and his cross and resurrection before the world. The church, especially this church, does a lot of good things in the world. And I've told people I'm so impressed by the lay leadership of this church that sometimes I'll have a conversation or show up to a meeting and I think, well, is there anything left for me to do? You all seem to have this pretty covered. I think, you know, just keep going, just keep doing that. <laughs> but the church is, uh, the church does a lot of good things and especially this church. But we are not the things we do. We're not a professional social service agency, although we help people. 
We're not a social club, although it's important for us to gather. Uh, we're not any of those things by themselves. We do those things because our calling, our vocation as a church, is to keep the Lord Jesus Christ and his cross and resurrection before the world. Our life is in him. He is our new life. And anything we let go of from our past is so that we can cling to him more closely and find life in him together. I am excited and overjoyed to share that new life with you. I don't know exactly how it will look, and none of us do. But again, that is my joy to discover it along with you. Thank you for having us in your midst. Thank you for the ministry you are already doing. And thank you for allowing me to serve as your priest. I hope as we move forward, we will find new life in Christ together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. stand and affirm our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Continuing now with the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. Who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this gathering. Particularly today, we pray for teachers and students as they get back to studies and as they start to work toward more in-person uh, instruction. May they do it healthy and sanely. <laughs> we pray for those who received bad news this week who need our strength and prayers, especially all of those on our prayer list. And we pray for all in this nation 
who hold differing opinions, we ask that they remember we are one nation under God, and in Paul's exhortation, that we remember to love each other as our neighbors, we love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray especially for all who have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Do we have other petitions? Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. We pray in thanksgiving for all those who are putting their lives at risk to care for the sick and provide essential services during this pandemic. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And so you remain forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may be in a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. An additional prayer for healing in the time of the coronavirus. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are affected by COVID-19. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain, and restore them your gift of health. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions, that they are essential for the common good. Protect those who are compelled to work in farms and fields, city streets and factories, which puts them in danger with little pay. Watch over all the first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of all is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort and our only help in the time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs>
Господь во тебе. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and light. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our 
our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting.
first offer the prayer for spiritual communion for those who could not be with us in person today. Communion, O Lord, with the faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Spirit is now being celebrated. I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, and proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Release and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now we offer the post Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed. Forgive as we have been forgiven. Love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.